Let's go to blade expert. So now things are going to start to get a little more complicated. I've already, I already have a, uh, uh, a stock model of where we're going to start at. You do have to create a stock model, especially if you're doing, if we're going to rough this out. And that's the example I want to show you. I'm going to turn that off. And I believe I have a tool ready. I have that same 5 8 in mill that I've been using all day. It hasn't, it hasn't worn out. All right, so now we're gonna go back up here into the multi-axis panel again. And let's go over here and select the blade expert. And again, this is a, can, can you cut this part with um, using regular axis, a uh, multi-axis toolpath? If you have the multi-axis add-on, you can use a unified toolpath, you can do a flow line. There's all kinds of toolpaths that you can cut this, but all of them are going to require that you create some extra geometry, uh, create some splines to help guide your tool, especially when, the, when it comes to tilting and so forth. And what Blade Expert and Port Expert do, they, they bring this very high level of automation here, and I'll show you. I'm not going to worry about my holder. Well, I already have it defined here. Uh, the stock, I'm going to go ahead and select uh, my stock here. I called it R1. And then all I simply have to do is come up here and uh, pick a pattern. So I'm going to do some roughing. It's going to be offset from the hub. I'm going to do zigzagging from leading edge. I'm going to start from the center and work my way out both directions. And then my step overs here, my maximum step over as far as sideways. Um, let's say I go 125. And then, my, then I'm going to go ahead and do one, uh, 125 for my debit cuts as well. Now all I have to do is just go define what I want to cut. So here, the blades and the splitters, if I had splitters, those would be the little, the half little blades in between there that you'll see sometimes. And uh, we're going to go ahead and select this. And that's one side of the blade, and that's the other. I'm probably going to add, that That should be good right there. I'm going to select OK to that. And stock to leave. I'm going to make sure I leave myself plenty of stock here. And then the fillets, I'm going to go ahead and pick the fillets to cut. I do want my tool to kind of come around the corner a little bit. So I'm gonna I'm gonna pick those two fillets right there as well. I'm gonna end my selection. And then it's asking for the hub. We're gonna leave some material in the hub. And I don't I don't have to sit there and create extra geometry. I'm actually using the model. Okay, just just taking the information that the model gives me. Let's let's get this out of the way. I'm gonna end my selection. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead. I will bump up the tolerance for this for this uh, for this example. I can tell it, you know, the number of segments I'm gonna cut. I believe in this example there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're just gonna do one for now, all right? And let's continue on here. So the two axis control. I'm really just gonna take all the defaults here for right now. My linking parameters. It is on automated and it kind of creates some loops that I don't want to do for today's example. I'm going to go to just feed distance on both of them, kind of clean things up a little bit. Um, taking the default stuff, everything seems to be okay. I'm not really going to really know other selections other than make sure that everything is in the top plane here. Just going through and making sure everything's okay. Uh, go back one more time. Got a roughing. The part definition looks good. We'll just go ahead and select OK to this and give it a few minutes and then it'll calculate a toolpath. There is my roughing toolpath right there. Let's see how this looks like in simulation. I'm going to go ahead and uh, I believe I have my stock model selected correctly here. I do. Let's go ahead and go to simulation. Open this window up kind of get all this stuff out of the way. There's my tool, see if I can slow him down a bit, run him. And he's gonna go ahead and just cut that out. And that's a nice clean looking tool path right there. All right, we can do a quick stock compare, see how we're, how we're doing. It did not violate anything. That looks pretty good right there. Oops, you zoom in, plenty of material. Close them down. Now, if I wanted to down rough the rest of the 
the veins here. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Just wanted to make sure when I counted them just a second ago, the part was an isometric and I thought I missed one. So we do have seven segments. We are going to cut all of them. We're going to start at segment number one. And I can select OK to this. And just like that, we're going to have all the all the cuts for uh, all the veins. I can go back to my simulation and run it. It's going to cut one vein at a time. So now there's times when you when you're doing something like this and the guys that have, you know, that have cut impellers, um, this may cause an issue when like you're running across this dental wall. In this example, obviously it's very simplified and you may not want to cut everything to full depth and then move on to the next one. So let's go ahead and pause this here. We do have selections to saying, oh, let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and do it by depth of cut, say for example, and then I select okay to this. It'll sit there and recalculate the tool paths and let's go ahead and see the result. I'll go ahead and run this again. So now it's so now it's taking it by depth. And you kind of want to do that um, to help you know keep the part rigid as much as possible. So you're kind of just working your way down vein by vein and then just you still have all this material here. And that looks like it's working pretty good right there. Wanted to finish up and do a quick stock compare and see how good I did that I crashed or not crashed into the top part. We'll check here in a second. And we could have done some larger step overs or even used a larger tool. And the system will tell you, like, if you want to use a bigger tool and it cannot reach in here, it'll it'll prompt you and say it was not able to remove all the material. You can do another stock model, then you can go ahead and pick that stock and tell it with a smaller tool that you want to machine that area. We have all, you know, the same kind of tools that you have, like when you're doing, you know, 3D surface tool pad and it says, hey, you want to go do remachining. We, you know, we have the same tools here. Let's go ahead and do a stock compare. And I, that looks really nice. I like the way that works. Sometimes I surprise myself. 